Good morning and welcome. It's that time once again. Happy Monday. The Patriot Radio News Hour live of the 30th of October. Where does the time go? We are just, what, a day away. Tomorrow is trick or treat. Uh, For those of you that care, and probably most of you don't, it is the start of tryouts, at least here in Arizona, for for basketball, basketball season, the fall sports, uh, you know. So if your if your sport is like soccer and that's in the fall, that tryout starts today. Basketball for the boys and the girls today as well. Uh, tomorrow, trick or treat. Uh, be safe out there. Keep an eye on those kitties. Our toll free number eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The website at allamericangold dot com. Make it part of your daily routine. Really, very first article it, it, today is really all that you need to know. Uh, gold is rallying right now. It's up what almost five bucks. Silver up about five cents. The Dow is down about eighty points as they're having some tax cut problems. Of course, so the problem is that they already know what it is that they're really doing. And it's just like, it's like Obamacare. It's like all the other promises that they've ever made to us, which is, oh, it's all for the middle class and this and that. And it's going to boost GDP by this much. And it's going to make America great again and bring back the jobs. And, and really, it's just a handout to Wall Street. Just like Obamacare was a handout to the insurance companies, uh, this is more of the same. The difference is we really can't pay for it. Uh, you know, we can't even get to at least Obamacare. They had the lie that it was going to reduce the deficit. Right? They had that lie going for them. This one, no, no one can put the numbers together well enough for even that to be true. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that today. We, we've got uh, big news about Citigroup and retail. Uh, this now... In regards to Macy's, uh, you're you're not going to want to miss that as well. And then California, California, they may be leaving the union, right? We we may have our own version of Catalonia, like in Spain, where now California word is that uh, they want to break away from the United States. They want to maybe go to become three different states. and, And we'll always, of course, really ultimately at the end of the day, always comes down to the money uh so we got a great show lined up for you stay tuned for that uh if you're looking at at buying selling trading we're here for you and and one of the things that it's happened uh it happened last week so don't wait if you if you know you need to sell or you're anticipating the need to sell don't wait till the last minute uh you know make sure you give yourself some time uh, so you can, especially if you're not here and you're not local, uh, you got to ship it to us, and then we probably have to ship it somewhere else, get it, send you your funds. So make sure you leave yourself enough time. And if you don't know that, yeah, we, we buy and sell uh, anything. that If it's a coin, a bar, uh, where it's, you know, we don't do the jewelry thing. We, we don't do that or the scrap gold uh, and silver uh, but but if it's a bar or a coin and you're looking to sell, listen, we're here for you. At 800-951-0592. If you want to get into a precious metals IRA, we can help you do that. Uh, if you want to learn more about the metals program, you go out to our website. You can read about it there. Or obviously call our 800 number uh, and we can take good care of you. Uh, we have shipping going on today and tomorrow. Uh, and we'll be all caught up once again. Uh, t- I know uh, silver, uh, there's a couple people waiting on some Indians. Those are all going on. The Indians are going out tomorrow. Uh, a bunch of silver, some $20 gold as well. All of that heading out uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, and we'll be uh, back right on track again. Uh, and so if you are if you want to do any of those things, I just want to remind people, especially those of you that need to sell, don't wait till the last minute. you you got the holidays coming up. you got everything right around the corner. Uh, so if you need to sell or you're thinking you're going to be selling, uh, give us a call and give yourself plenty of time at 800-951-0592. Thursday, by the way, is the day uh, that it appears Donald Trump is going to be nominating our next Federal Reserve President. All indicators.
indications pointing to, as I said weeks ago, Jay Powell. Uh, President Trump getting closer to name uh, the next Fed chair, and now they're saying the announcement is going to be made on Thursday and that he is now heavily leaning uh, towards Powell to replace Janet Yellen, whose term uh, expires in February. And really, very similar. I would I would view Powell uh, and Janet Yellen's uh, both very very similar. Neither one of them wants to raise rates too aggressively. Uh, Powell does like eliminating regulation, uh, so I think that's one of the reasons why why Trump likes him. Of course, that just allows for more risk uh, to be taken. Uh, the the interesting thing is, what will that mean for December, which is the next kind of rate hike talk? If Janet Yellen's not reappointed, may open the way for her to go ahead and do it. Uh, which actually, as we know, gold really likes December rate hikes. We've had two years in a row where we've had December rate hikes. The first one uh, 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 kind of was the bottom in gold. Uh, and every year since then, we've gotten a December rate hike, and gold ends up finishing higher. Every, you know, we're two for two. Uh, how about three for three? That'd be a good thing. Uh, but it looks like that is going to be happening on Thursday. Uh, so, again, if you want to have your news before everybody else, you listen right here. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The Dow now down a hundred points as the word is breaking that the tax cuts for corporate America may now be gradual. In other words, they're, tr- they're talking about phasing in uh, the lower tax rate for businesses, and and again. It's very, very frustrating because, you know, one of the things as you, as we kind of talk about what's happening here and what's going on and how they lie to us and misrepresent and always end up fattening their own pocket. I mean, really, when you think about the last 40, 50 years, that's really kind of what's happened. Do you know that for the first time in, in our nation's history, the middle class does not make up the majority of the population. How did that happen? And, you know, and it's funny because most people talk about one of the things that made America so great was that middle class. And yet they've been for 50 years now, they've been eating away at us and eating away at us, and they come out and they... they they don't tell us the truth. They misrepresent the facts. They've got all of the, the what, I'll, what I'll call the debt channels, right? You got Fox Business, you got CNBC, you got CNBC Asia, Bloomberg. I mean, it's the, if you have direct TV, you know, it's like channel 353 to 360. It's all, it's all dedicated to debt. And they come out and they try to convince you that these are good things, that these are good policies, and that if we just do this, somehow this time we are going to get economic nirvana. And by and large, guess what? We do what they say. Because you know what? Really, we, we like that. We do. You know, we, we like it when somebody says, hey, listen, I'm going to give you the roadmap for success. Right? Who wouldn't like that? And, and what we found out is it was all a big it was all a big lie. It was all a huge misrepresentation that really allowed the people at the very top to be rewarded. And and I don't know how it started. I, I mean I know it started before Reagan. It did. But the the trickle-down economics model that we've been on now, 
you know, where somehow if we just let the mega rich get even richer, you know, they'll throw a few peanuts down our way. And you sit there and you look at the fact that we're going to roll over $21 trillion of debt uh, by the time Donald Trump's been in office for about a year, right? And we are running budget deficits that exceed a trillion dollars every single year. You know, they reported the last one right at the 666 number, right, the, the good number, which is still, it's an incredible amount of money. Last week I told you about Goldman Sachs. They finally got around to doing a little math, right? It said, hey, somewhere around 2019, give or take, uh, we're going to have a trillion dollar a year budget deficit. And one of the things, you know, when we talk about why it is that you hold gold and you hold silver, obviously, first and foremost, it's a hedge against the dollar. It's a store of value. It, it's something where, you know, gold, it doesn't make you rich. But what it does do is it preserves the wealth you've already accumulated. And you start thinking about the reckless policies uh, that have been been in place, and the really reckless policies over the last 10 years. And really, you probably can go back to, to the last 20 years when they repealed and really buried Glass-Steagall for good and all of those things, and, and led to where we sit today. And you know how these things end. You know, we, we, we know how they end. We know that the the dollar ends up going to zero, fiat money. That's what it does. So So you hold it for that reason. But you know what? There's another reason. And that's because you want to have something outside of it. And I love it when, I know Jim Cramer does this a lot. For those of you that don't know Jim Cramer, he's one of the big stars on CNBC. And, and he talks about diversified portfolios. And, and you call him up and you give him five stocks and you say, am I diversified? And I'll give you a booyah or whatever it may be. If you don't have something outside of the debt markets, you're not diversified period. And you know what? They don't want you to be diversified. The same people that misrepresent what all of the policies have really done, the same people that we elect time and time and time again, the same people that somehow created the debt channel, they don't want you to have money there because you actually would have real money, right? They want you to have the fake money, the debt money, the obligation to pay money. And when you sit there and you really understand what it is their model has been, and like I said, I've been, I've been saying it for the last couple of weeks, it really didn't matter who the next Fed chief. Okay, so it's going to be Jay Powell. Okay, great. Right, he's, he's really just like Janet Yellen. Except, you know, his name's Jay Powell instead of Janet Yellen. So uh, Donald can deliver on the fact that he, he got someone else in. But it's really just more of the same. You know, let me ask you this. So one of the things in this tax policy that they talked about was the repatriation of money. Right? We all are, you've heard that ad infinitum. And, and they're, they're making this big, big point. And listen, if I was a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, I'd do the same thing. Hey, I want to bring all this money back for free so I can buy back my own stock. I mean, that's that's what they're going to do. But they were talking about this repatriation of money, and the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, is the champion of this. Of course, Mnuchin, for those of you that don't know, he was a Goldman Sachs guy. Do you know what company, and I did not know this until till today, 
nobody has more offshore companies, you know, these tax havens than Goldman Sachs. Just say. If you think this is about you, guess again. Because if it was about you, we wouldn't have all of this stuff about the corporate tax rate. That's not about us. Listen, the corporate tax rates have done nothing but go down. Right? No one wants to talk about the fact that they've already been cut by, what, 60%, 70% since the 1970s? And we have now have less Americans in the middle class. It's the first time in history that they're not the majority. We go a hundred million dollars into debt every single hour. So just in the length of this program, there's a hundred million. And if it's a bad day, right? If something bad happens, right? A hurricane, a wildfire, right? Then it all gets thrown out of whack. And you, and you talk about what's really happening to to the country, right? We talk about stagnation, and I, I talk about stagflation a lot. You know, and, and, and I think we're going to find this to be true, where during the Great Depression, the biggest problem they said that we had was deflation, right? Of course, that was a central bank trick. Right, because as as history will show you, and of course I've been you know part of your history education. You know when gold and silver were the currency, we didn't have inflation. Matter of fact, the only time we had inflation war, Civil War, War of eighteen twelve, right, World War One, and then of course World War Two. Uh, but we were still kind of quasi on the gold standard when they brought in the central bank. They didn't bring now again. They brought it in and told us it was for us. Within 20 years, they bankrupted everybody, <laughs> shut the banks, took the gold, then reopened them. See, because they couldn't do their job effectively as long as the citizenry held gold and silver. And as soon as they were able to get the gold window to close in 1971, all that we've done is blown up this huge bubble and it's getting ready. Right? We've got stocks at, well, not today because it's down today, but at all time record high, but we got to give this huge tax cut. And if we don't get this tax cut, the stock market's due. Or so they would tell you. Then that if you do, GDP's going to go to 5%, maybe 6 nonsense and then you start thinking about 44 million Americans now work more than one job then you start hearing things about them going after 401k the other day remember that by the way I think they put a little caveat on that now they're talking about hey you know what we'll let you put it in instead of tax deferred after tax Right that way, uh, you know, you won't have to worry about what the tax rate's going to be when you get older. And I'm going to tell you <laughs> right now, if you're like 25, I would not do that. And the only reason why I say I wouldn't do that because by, by the time you get to 70, it's, that money's going to be go- long gone. We're not going to make it that far. But I go back to this roadmap. Think about the lies that they've they've told us. And they told us about maxing out our 401ks and building your nest thing. And when you got to the prime age, right, when you got to 65 or 62 or 67 or 70, whatever the retirement age, depending on how old you are, was, if you had done it right and you had saved and, and were were money conscious, you didn't overspend, and you built that nest egg. When you retired, you were supposed to buy bonds and live off the interest. Just so, you know, is it by accident that the largest portion of the American public, now the baby boomers, are retiring in droves, and you cannot do that, can you? 
right? You're not going to be able, I don't care how big the nest egg is, if you're getting 1%, you're not going to make it. What happened? You did what they said. You did it the way they told you to do it, and then they what? They they pulled the football away from you, right? They did. They Charlie Browned you, right? right? Who was? Who's the gal that always pulls the football away from Charlie Brown? Is that Lucy? She's mean, right? Lucy's mean, right? They're they're, they're Lucy, right? Pull, pull the football away, then we end up on our butts. Now they're talking about changing the 401k, and and they're talking about doing all of these things to try to generate more revenue because they don't know how to do it. Getting rid of the mortgage deduction, right? Because we know us middle class folk, we don't want that, <laughs> right? The incentive to buy the home. Now that Wall Street's buying up all the houses out there, let's get rid of that mortgage deduction. Make it even harder for us to live the American dream. And again, who's it all for? Why don't they want you to own gold and silver? The answer is simple. Because they're going to want to take what you have. Period. 800-951-0592. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now from the Phyllis Schlafly Center Studios, here's Ryan Haidt. Globalism, for all its big money backers and high power promoters, is not appealing to the average American. Americans love freedom, liberty, and national sovereignty. As Phyllis Schlafly might put it, globalism doesn't play in Peoria. Unfortunately, the globalists are aware of this ideological disadvantage, so they've concocted a diabolical scheme to deceive the American people as to their real intentions. Taking a page from the federal daycare playbook, they proceeded to proclaim a crisis, wrap it in children, and try to intimidate Congress. The name of their Trojan horse was the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Though the threat was great and the stakes were high, the total and ultimate defeat over this Trojan terror marked a great victory for the Phyllis Schlafly Report and the American people. The argument for national sovereignty was clearly laid out by the widely distributed March 1993 issue of the Phyllis Schlafly Report, entitled, The New World Order Wants Your Children. Nobody wants to be labeled anti-children, much less politicians. So when globalists turned over the U.N. Convention on the Rights of the Child to Congress for ratification, they went so far as to call any congressman anti-children if he opposed the U.N. treaty. Amidst the deception of the globalists, the Phyllis Schlafly report cut to the heart of the issue. When conservative congressmen were grasping for some weapon with which to combat the bad publicity thrust on them by the imagery of suffering children, the Phyllis Schlafly report became that weapon to combat the globalists' plan. The treaty's singular purpose was to give global government control of America's most foundational building block, her families. While claiming to fill a gap in human rights where children are concerned, it actually would have subjected sovereign American citizens, court decisions, and legislation to the rulings of international courts. Phyllis questioned what these supposed rights might mean when put before an international court of potentially anti-American sentiment. We cannot let globalists bamboozle people with deceiving terms and manufactured rights. The Phyllis Schlafly Report called the liberals bluff, and we must do the same today. 2017 marks 50 years of the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, mailed, broadcast, and posted online to millions of Americans eager to follow her traditional conservative perspective. We continue that legacy at phyllisschlafly.com. Archiving the past, addressing today's key issues, and staying alert for the future. So bookmark phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening, and join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Welcome back. 800-951-0592. Gold's up 7 uh, and rising uh, $1,279. Silver is up $0.10. Cents. Sixteen dollars and eighty-six cents. I do. I have a a handful, a small amount of U.S. twenty-dollar 
St. Gaudens. They are actually here uh, in stock. Uh, they're at 1320 at 800 951 Take the time, put them away. And just, I, 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 I'm going to go, and, and, and you can read it for yourself. Our first article today, Michael Snyder, he does a great job talking about the truth. Okay, forget about the headlines, right? Take away, just understand, right, this tax cut's not for us. And all they say it is, but it's really not. Right, they're, they're, they're trying to get their buddies another bump on Wall Street. Now, how can they do it? Well, they, they can't do it without acting like they're giving us a... And yes, for some of us, our taxes will go down. And say, well, Joe, I did. My taxes went down for a little bit. Right? For a little bit. But just remember, they didn't do it for you. Because they were doing it for us. There would be no, t- no tax cuts for Wall Street. Right, but that that's their that's their game. Well, you know, we can't give it to the to the middle class. I mean, they'll probably try to save it. They won't spend it, and we won't get GDP growth from it because you know stock buybacks count as GDP growth, and that's just a whole lot easier. So Michael Snyder he brought up a great point. The bottom ninety percent. And I, I love talking about, you know, the bottom 90%. So 90%, if you go back to, you know, the, to the historical time before they took us off the gold standard, before we really went full-blown into this, this great debt bubble, the bottom 90% brought home more than 60% of the income in the United States, okay? So, you know, as you're looking at who was making the money, right, the top 10% accounted for less than 40% of the income. Fast forward to today, the bottom 90% now bring home less than 50%. So the top 10% generate more income in the United States today than the other 90% combined. The middle class has been shrinking year after year. Right, And the first time, and, and I didn't know, I thought it was this year, 2015, by the way, was the first year the middle class did not make up the majority of the country. And now they're talking about another acceleration. And this is kind of what happens every crisis, every time the bubble pops. Every solution that they give is a solution to the rich people. And you hear it, and I hear it on Fox, and I I only can tolerate a little bit. I turn it on in the morning, I do turn it on at night just to see where gold's at, and and whatever's on I'll listen to for a minute, Drew, and then I can't listen anymore. Well, they're the only ones that pay any taxes, or it's only this and it's only that, so we got to give it to them. We've been giving it to them for 50 years. There's no possible way. I wish there was. There's no possible way for us to pay for what's coming. And really, I don't even think it's coming anymore. It's already here. Over the next 75 years, I know that's a long time, right? Over the next 75 years, and I just, because I really, I want to give you perspective. The deficit, the fiscal gap is going to be $210 trillion, and that's not a, a outlandish estimate. That's really conservative. And I, I would say that it, it's middle to to bottom 25 percent it's not even close to you know some people are going you know it's going to be 500 trillion 700 trillion right so this 210 is kind of just you know if you're just doing basic math and, and not getting too crazy with with gdps and all of the things of that nature 210 trillion dollars and, 
and I only bring it up because we we only hit the first trillion in 1981. The United States went what, what, what I'm trying to do 205 years before it got its first trillion in debt. We're now at 20 and a half trillion. Right in the last, what, 81, 91, 01, 2011, and the last 30-some years. So we went 205 years to get $1 trillion. The vast majority of that time, we were on the gold standard. The vast majority of that time, we built ourselves up into a superpower. I mean, we did. Right? America was the envy of the rest of the world the whole time. We didn't have financial crisis. We didn't have Great Depressions. We didn't have massive inflation or deflation until we allowed the central bankers to take over. And the answer that they gave us was you needed, we needed to unshackle them. Right, so they could work. You know, they they've studied at the greatest schools, and they've got all of the great formulas, and they're going to lead us down into economic salvation. Yet every single path that they've taken us down has ended up to be wrong. I mean, think back to the late '90s and Alan Greenspan. We're going to pay off the debt by 2010. <laughs> and don't worry. See, he actually knew. See, Alan knew. Just like Ben knew, just like Janet knows, just like Jay Powell, they know. The only thing that was going to save us was paying off the debt and the, not having to pay the interest. Where is the money going to come from? So when I tell you the next 10 years, we're going to go from 20 to 40. Over the next 75 years, we're going to go from 20 to 200 plus trillion. But, you know, we, we won't get that long, right? The currency won't last that long. Where is it going to come from? How much more are you willing to pay? How much are you willing to see all of these government programs last? What do you think you really need to do to be prepared? 800-951-0592. We'll be back after the break. It's up to you to be ready. If you've listened and you haven't prepared, it's one of two things, right? For some of us, I get it. I can't. I'm tapped. Right? I don't have the extra funds. And... There's nothing you can do, right? We've already fallen a victim. If you think about from 60% down to 49%, right? 11% of the population has fallen in uh, down to the dark side, right? And it keeps happening. And every crash that happens in bigger chunks, and, and you're left with this horrible situation where there's a small percentage on the top and then there's everybody else and now all of it really teetering on a tax cut, right? <laughs> Not for you or I. Listen, they could, if they came out tomorrow and said no cuts for the middle class and we're still going to give tax cuts to corporations, the stock market would, would be okay with it, trust me. We wouldn't be, but they'd be. And just the talk of a, well, you know why? They got to try to phase them in because they know it's, a, they, they know it's not going to work. B, they know how big it's going, what it's going to do to the budget deficit. It's going to be, it's incredible. I mean, and, and I'm three, four, five hundred billion in year one, year two, year three, every year on top of, you know, we're already doing a trillion. You need to take the time. The the 50 years of debt ballooning, you 
you have no idea what it really was. Because we just kicked the can down the road on tens of trillions of dollars, and now guess what? The road hit a dead end. Right? We can't kick it anywhere else. There's nowhere to go. And now it's going to really start piling on, and we're seeing it everywhere, right? Venezuela is getting ready to default. Hartford's going to default. Puerto Rico's already defaulted, right? How far behind are all the kinds of these other cities and states like Connecticut and Kentucky and Illinois? And of course, let's not leave out Chicago and Oklahoma and Kansas and all of the rest of them. New York and New Jersey, California so broke, they don't even know what to do. Let's let's separate from the union. Let's form three states. Not all, I, I mean, all of them are, you know, tricks to try to avoid what is inevitable. And then you look even closer to home, and again, I, it's one of the greatest mysteries I've ever seen. What's going to happen to all of these malls? Citigroup today. The retail business continues to slip. Macy's has has seen significant pressure on sales, on margins, and they no longer make money as a retailer, according to Citigroup. They said Macy's stock is not alone. They mentioned companies like J.C. Petty. Sears, you don't even have to throw them in there. Nordstrom's, right? You pretty much anybody that's in a mall is a probably on the list. They said that foot traffic continues to decline, despite the company claiming a turnaround, and despite the company shuttering stores, it's still not enough. Where, where, I mean, what's going to happen, right? How, we're, really, we're going to have this great economic prosperity, and we're going to create all of these jobs, and people are going to spend all of this money, and everyone's going to go work for Amazon, and it's going to be wonderful? I, mean, I guess it could be if all of the malls were paid for, right? I mean, all they do is take out debt, and no one actually pays off anything in that industry. And it says that uh, according to to Citigroup, uh, retailing for the huge, and, and really they were talking mostly about the mall clothing companies are done. And 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 you know you just throw these things out there that all the things that they're trying to cover up, they're trying to pretend like it's not happening, right? They're trying to pretend that somehow uh, being an Uber or Lyft driver or asking if you'd like Coke or or Pepsi, right, or or would you like fries with that shake, somehow is going to lead you to economic prosperity. But don't worry, if we give corporate America a tax cut, somehow you'll make more money. 800-951-0592, U.S. $20 cents, $1,320, gold's up, Eight now, twelve hundred and eighty dollars. Silver's now up fifteen cents at sixteen ninety. Uh, if you if you look at it like our side, our side will say gold's up five, uh, but the same thing. It just it all has to do with that electronic trade stuff that happens for uh, an hour after the gold market closes. But neither here nor there. You got gold rising on the news that. They're not going to be able to deliver the big cut. And it's so funny. Not the big cut to the middle class, right? No, and they're not going to be able to deliver on the big cut to Wall Street. And that's got everybody uh, running for cover on the report that, if you've just missed it, a uh, report that the corporate tax cut is going to be gradual. I don't even know where the plan is. I don't know when it's going to be released, right? They're... They're being pretty tight-lipped about it, and 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 I get it. When you when you try to deceive, it's always best to give people as little time as possible 
right? Kind of how do you think Obamacare happened, right? They deceived us all and then gave it nobody any time. Vote yes or no. And remember, you have to vote for the bill to see what's in the bill. Same thing applies. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. More deficit problems. The average price of the most popular type of Obama of Obamacare health plan sold on the federal insurance marketplace will rise 34%. But don't worry. They're going to pretend it didn't happen because most of the people that have this plan, well, actually all of the people that have the most popular plan, which, by the way, accounts for 80% of all plans in the marketplace are subsidized by the government. Yep, that's right. You're not even going to know what happened because your premiums are subsidized by the government. Uh, They'll be significantly significantly reduced of what a customer directly pays. Many and the majority of the subsidized customers will pay less than $100, less than $100 uh, health care plans ro- are going to rise. The most popular plan, which, by the way, is the silver plan. I don't know what that is, but that is the, I would call it the the subsidy plan. That's where you're going to get the best bang for your buck and you get the biggest uh, kickback from the government. Uh, is going to raise rise 34%, which, in other words, just goes right to the federal budget deficit. Uh, this just breaking. Home builders now are saying they will not support uh, the Republican tax plan. Again, of course, that makes sense, right? Because it looks like maybe they know. So I don't know, but apparently they know that the mortgage deduction it looks like it's going to be on the chopping block. A uh, quick look, like I said, gold $1,279.80. Silver is at $16.90. U.S. St. Gaudens, these are here in stock at thirteen twenty. So 40 bucks over spot for a, a St. Gaudens. It's just, it's, every time I do it, I'm still amazed at how inexpensive that is at 800 951 Zero five nine two U.S. Silver Eagles. They're still at four hundred bucks a roll. So, uh, you know, grab some Saints, throw a few Silver Eagles in there as well. By the way, we also have those in stock right now as well. So eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Remember, if you're a seller, call us. We're buying. We're buying it all. But give yourself time. Don't wait till the last minute. Uh, and give yourself the time so we can make sure you've got the money when you need it. 800 951 We've got big shipping days both today and tomorrow. Uh, so if you're waiting for a delivery, it's on its way. Uh, and then remember, Halloween coming tomorrow. I hope all of you have a wonderful trick-or-treat. I know that, uh, at least for our neighborhood, we do pretty good. We got one of those neighborhoods. We we get quite a few trick or treaters, and and uh, just be safe out there. And you know, I remember we used to be dressed up at school. That's no longer allowed either. I don't know. It, it, the world's gone nuts. The whole thing's gone nuts. I can't even watch the NFL anymore. I mean, what's the world come to? If you would have told me a year ago, hey Joe, you're gonna throw your hands up and stop watching the NFL, I said you're crazy. Then again, some of you are going to be like when the debt's forty trillion that no one told you. Well, that's just as crazy. Patriot Radio News Hour. Make sure you prepare. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. We'll talk again on uh, Halloween. 